Hi, in today's video we are going to talk about the edit menu in the Starfront program. So click on the edit menu, you will see there are five icons under the edit menu. The first is to edit the section file, those are your aluminium profiles. The second is to edit your component file. Component is the same as hardware. That includes all of your handles, your locks, your hinges, your screws, that type of thing. The third is to edit your glass file. That is for any glazing that is going to go into your system. The fourth is your finish. Your finishes are either your anodizing finishing or your powder coating finishing that you apply to your aluminium profiles. And the final one is where you can define different styles of door handles to show in your graphics. So let's start with the sections file. Once you click edit the sections file, you will see the following screen comes up. Now this screen, the blue section at the top, is a filter. It allows you to filter out certain things or certain systems so that you're not looking at the entire range of sections at one time. The second section is the basic section information. We have the section code, the length number, what segment, whether it's a segment A or segment B die, which system that profile belongs to, a description of that profile, a short description if it exists, so for example an R4, the short description would just be an R4, and the standard length of that profile. Then under this general tab we have additional information available. We have the die number, we have the standard length of the profile, the anodizing perimeter, the painting perimeter, the IX and the IY value. If you've watched the introduction video on inertias, you will know what those IX and IY values are. We then have the alloy that this profile is extruded in, in this case 6063. We have a price and we have a supplier. Let's look at a specific system to work through the other options. So click on the drop-down arrow next to the system block and I am going to choose Swift 28. Now the other icons that are available, well first of all we have a drawing of that profile. That drawing has got the basic overall width and the overall height of that drawing shown. This is a full CAD drawing. I can use my wheel on my mouse button to zoom in to zoom out on that drawing so if i want to see a particular detail i can zoom into that detail and i can see exactly what is going on okay i also have scroll bars on the sides that allows me to move around that drawing if need be the icons at the bottom let's just go through those icons the first one is to go back to the first section in your section file. The next icon is to go to the previous section. Then we go to the next section and then we go to the last section. So because I have a particular extrusion system filtered out here, if I say go to the first, it will go to the first section or profile within the SWIFT 28 range and then as I click on that next button I will basically scroll through the available sections within the SWIFT 28 system. If I go to the last section it will just take me to the end of those sections. So basically those first four buttons are just to navigate around that section file and maybe to look for a particular profile. So let's say I'm looking for a normal mullion, then I would use that one there for the normal mullion. The next icon is the search icon, and that is to look for a particular profile. Please note that the search icon will only search within the filtered system. 
So I have SUF28 filtered out here. If I click on the search icon and I say, for example, interlock, it won't find anything because there is no interlock on the SUF28 system. If I search for, let's say, Malian, then I will obviously see the range of different Malians that are available on the SUF28 system. If I want to search across the entire file, then I must first, at the top right here, clear which system is filtered out. Now when I do my search, let's say I say interlock, I will see interlocks across all systems. So that's on the 500 series, that's on the Icon, that's on the 540, the Clip 38, the Palace Multi, and the Vert 70. So you need to just be aware when you are utilizing the search button, do you have anything filtered out? The next button across is a browse button. What Browse allows you to do is it just allows you to visually scroll through that file and look for a particular item. Okay, I can narrow the browsing down, I can filter. So if I'm going to look for, for example, a lock style, I can put in the word lock and I'll pick up any description with the word lock in it, including interlocker because the word interlocker contains the word lock. You'll also notice that these search criteria are not case sensitive and it will search for that word in any part of that description. You're not restricted to having to work strictly left to right on that description. Alright, so that is, that is your search screen and your browse screen. The next one is to print a section report. So once I have found a particular section, let's say I'm looking for a, a SWIFT 28 million. So I can go into the, the, the SWIFT 28 system, I can search million. Let's say I want the 54 mil million. If I wish to produce a printout, let's say I want my factory, someone in the factory to go and find that profile for me, then I can use this button here, which is print section report. And what that section report does is it will just list for you those sections which comply to your search criteria. Okay, the next button is the print price file button. Once again, this button will only act on the system that is filtered out. What this button does for you, when you click it, you have a choice. Do you want to see your prices per meter or prices per length? So we're going to choose prices per length. And it will then print out your section price file. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, so I have the Kurelco Swift 28 system filtered out. My Docist or my CDP is with speaker. The effective date of my price file is the 25th of the 9th, 2019. And then I will get a small drawing, the die number, the description, the standard length of that profile, and then the price in mole, natural 15, natural 25, white, bronze, charcoal, black, silver, popular colors, and category 1 colors. So your CDP has the ability to set up this price file in whatever format they want. So it will vary according to which CDP you are using on the program. This is quite important to use, for example, to ensure that when you are doing a design utilizing white powder coating, that you use the correct code here. So for Wispico, their white powder coating, they use powder DAP055P. And when you do your design, you must ensure you use the same code to get the benefit of this pricing. So that is your section price file. Um, I can also print a section label which are just labels that contain the basic information. There's eight labels down and two labels across. So you can buy standard label paper, print these on, and these can be used to label your shelves on your 
racks in your warehouse or whatever the case is. Okay, and then the last three icons, the reload button, this just, if I have zoomed into this drawing and I push reload, it will just put me back to the standard view of that particular profile. The next is to print this view. So if I use this print view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a one page report, okay, which contains that drawing on the report. Any other technical information on that profile is contained on there. So if you want to send someone into the workshop to look for this profile, you can take this report printed out and they can see exactly what that profile looks like. Okay, and then your final option is to open this drawing in CAD. There will be a separate video on CAD, so we're not going to go into any details at the moment on that. One thing that you will notice is we do not have an add or delete button here on the sections file. You cannot add additional aluminium profiles to the system, nor can you delete any of the profiles from the system. This is because the program is sponsored by Wispico, and Wispico's core business is the supplying of aluminium extrusions. All right, so that's, that's the functionality of the sections file. Let's close that and let's move on to our next one, which is the components file. So when I enter into the components file, I see a very similar screen layout to what I have in the sections file. At the top in this blue area, I've got the ability to filter things out. Now here, when I'm filtering out, I'm not filtering out by system. I am filtering out by category of component. So if we go to, for example, rollers and hangers, then when we scroll through our file, we will see the various rollers and hangers available on the Wispico catalog. You will see that there are pictures for the majority of items, but occasionally you'll come up with a page like this where we do not have an image for that particular item. So it will just say no images available. All right. Similarly to your section file, here I have my component code, my description of that component, which category it belongs to and which subcategory it belongs to. Then under my general tab, I have the units. So these are sold in each. They're not sold per pair or if I was selling gasket, it would be per meter. I have the price for that item. I have the pack size. So there's one per pack. There's the weight, which is 10 grams in this situation. There's the supplier. There's the color. There's an optional weight limit and an optional size limit. So as you go through this file, you will pick up different options according to which hardware item is selected. You also have a categories tab, which just defines what the different categories are that are available. And we have a similar browsing facility to what we had in the sections file. All right. You will notice now that in my navigation icons, I still have the same, which is go to the first component, go to the prior or previous component, go to the next component, go to the last component. Remember that is always within this category. If I want to clear the category, then I will use that clear button at the top there. All right. But now I have two additional icons. I have an add or insert component icon and I have a delete component icon. All right, so you, you can navigate utilizing your, these usual navigation buttons. But now if I want to add my own hardware item, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the small plus sign at the bottom here, which says in, insert component. And my starting point, you don't fill in your filter when you are adding a component. Your filter is just to narrow down your selection of available components. 
you put in your component code. So I'm just going to call this an ABC123. That is my product code. I'm going to call this my own door handle. All right. And I can give it a category and a subcategory. Now, if you're not sure what the categories are, you can click on the categories tab. So this is going to be obviously be under handles um, and locks. So let's just scroll up here. Actually, handles and catches. So I can simply copy that and put that category into there for my handles and catches. Then I say, how are these handles sold? They are sold per pair. The unit price, I'll pay 100 Rand per pair. Uh, the pack size is one because it's one pair. Normally you use the pack size when you are talking about a box of screws. So the box of screws is 200 Rand. There are 100 screws in that box. So the pack size would be 100 and the unit would be each. So a box of 100 screws costs you 200 Rand. But they are costed each when you're doing a design in Starfront. The weight you can put in if you have the weight, let's say it is 0.2 kilograms. Supplier, I'm going to put here my own hardware supplier if I wish to do. Uh, color, so that these are brass. The weight limit and the size limit if there is. So you are free to add your own items to this file. You'll see now if I go in and do a search, let's just clear that search, and I put in, I know it's an ABC, oops, an ABC, then you see it will find my own door handle with my own information. Now, it is possible for you to set this door handle as your default door handle on the system. Please just keep in mind that any hardware that you add or any components that you add into this file become your responsibility to manage that price. So, your CDP will automatically manage the price of the rest of the hardware in the, in the file, but it becomes your responsibility for anything you add. So it can be quite dangerous because if you don't keep those prices up to date and you set that as your default hardware, you could be in a situation that you are not costing correctly. So just be aware of these things. All right, I still have my standard search button. So let's say, for example, I want to search for a slimline handle. I can type in the word slimline, it will then list the different slimline handles that are available. And hopefully, as I have all except for that one, I will have a picture of that handle available to me as well. Okay, I have a similar browse facility to what I had in the profiles database. I can also print a price list. So once again, that price list corresponds to your Creoka distribution partner that you've got active. So these are the component prices effective the 25th of the 9th, 2019 from the speaker. And you'll see my component or my hardware price list is broken according to my hardware categories. If I don't want to see it all, I just want to see a price list on my handles, then I can go into here I can filter out handles and catches and I can print and now I will just get a price list on my handles and my catches. These indented divisions here, these are your hardware subcategories. So I have got my handles and catches split into Euro, my Euro groove handles, my flush bolts for shop fronts, my flush pull handles other lever handles, slimline handles, etc. Okay, so that's, uh, that, that's looking at the print facility. And then I can also print a catalog. So this is basically an electronic catalog of all of the hardware items available from the speaker in your selected category. So it'll just do a Creolka Components cover page and then it will give you handles and catches, your same hardware category as before, 
the code, the description, an alternative code if there is one, pack size, the unit, the price, and the old Wispico code if need be, with a drawing of that item. So this kind of thing you can generate a manual or a, a, a reference for your workshop. Uh, your workshop manager can scroll through it and look for information or look for a particular product. Okay, so that is your, your hardware file. Um, if I now decide I no longer want this handle ABC123, then I can use my delete component button, my small minus sign. Are you sure you wish to delete it? Yes. And then that item will be gone. At this stage, you cannot add a hardware image or a, a picture for your hardware that you add onto the system. But it is something that might be available in a future release. Okay, so that's our component file. Then let's move on next to our edit the glass file. Now when you get Starfront, it already has quite a few standard glass codes loaded for you. If I just use my browse facility, <coughs> you'll see we've got our standard 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10 and 12 mil float glass. Uh, there's a fly screen mesh which can be used to fold certain openings. Then I've got my insulated glass unit or my double glazing. I have a 20, 22, 24 and 28 millimeter double glazing. I have a 24 and a 28 safety glass double glaze unit. Then I have my standard PVB laminates, my 6.38, 8.38, 10.38 and 12.38. Um, then a few other obscure glasses which we will go through when we do the, uh, the design portion of the program. Um, I can have something like aluminium plates in, although it's not a glass, it does form, form, form um, part of your glazing. So if you want to put an aluminium plate in the bottom panel of a door or a window, you can do that. Then I have some stipper lights, my um, obscure frosted glass, and then I have some tough and safety glass, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10 and 12 millimeter. So those are the standard glass codes that are supplied automatically on Starfront. But once again, you have your own plus button. So you are free to add whatever glass codes you want onto the system. So let's just go to, for example, our Lab01. Let's have a look at, at what information is, is shown on that glass. I have a glass code. I have a type. So the, this type of glass is laminated annealed safety glass. And the reason why the program needs to know the type is because the limitations on the maximum area according to the glass thickness is a function of the type of glass. Laminated glass has got different regulations to float glass or annealed glass. Okay, so I have a mass a kilograms per square meter for that item. I have a nominal thickness and a total thickness. Now the difference between your nominal thickness is your nominal thickness is just the thickness of glass excluding any interlayers between that glass. So here when I've got 6.38 PVB laminate, my glass I have two, I have three millimeters on the one side, three millimeters on the other side. And then I have a 0.38 millimeter laminate in between those two pieces of glass. So my nominal thickness is just the glass. So the total thickness of the glass alone is 6 mils. And the total thickness of the entire um, code is 6.38 millimeters. And that's important because some regulations work on the nominal thickness. Other regulations or other automations such as selecting the correct gasket works on the total thickness. It's very important if you add your own glass into the system to make sure that you populate both the nominal thickness and the total thickness. In some circumstances, for example, normal flat glass, your nominal thickness and your total thickness will be the same. Then I have a wastage factor. This is for costing purposes. All right, if I'm going to cut my own glass, that is the wastage factor that it's going to utilize as default. 
If you are going to run a glass optimizer, you can obviously drop that quite a bit. Then I have the maximum pain area. So for this type of glass, the maximum pain area for 6.38 laminated glass is 2.9 square meters. So every time I design utilizing this glass, Starfront will make sure that each individual glass panel does not exceed 2.9 square meters. And if it does, it will give you a warning. Then I have two different prices. I have a square meter price and a cut to size price. Each quote that I produce on Starfront, I have the option of choosing, do I want to price where I'm cutting my own glass, all right, which will then work with my square meter price, or am I buying my glass cut to size, in which case it would use the cut to size price. Um, generally speaking, your square meter price is going to be cheaper than your cut to size price, but then it will add the 25% wastage factor. If you are working on your cut to size price, then you are assuming that your supplier is cutting the glass and it won't add that wastage factor into it. I have the ability to specify an alternative code if I need. And then there are certain options. Does this glass comply as a safety glass? Obviously, as being laminated glass, yes, it is a safety glass. I can then define whether this is a double glazing panel. In this situation, it's not a double glaze or an insulated glass unit. And I can also choose if it's pattern glass. Pattern glass is not important. It's only if you want to interface with the glass optimizer so that it doesn't rotate your pieces of glass before cutting them out of a sheet. All right, so my navigation buttons are exactly the same as they are on all the other um, systems on my sections and on my components all right what I do have here is the color that I want to represent that piece of glass when I do a design now each of the glass the preloaded glass types have got a color loaded so this is 6.38 if I just scroll to the right 8.38 10.38 and 12.38 you can see each time that color is getting a little bit darker as I go from 6 to 8 to 10 to 12. So that is just how we've created those colors. But you can change this color at any time you want. If you just click on that color, you can go and choose any color. So you can say, I would like to represent this glass by a light yellow. And from now on, every time I do a design that utilizes my 12.38 laminate glass, it will show it as yellow. If I change that in error and I want to go back to the standard color, I can just say reset color and it will put back in the standard colors. There are some people who don't want to print, for example, their drawings in color. So what they do is they go and set all of the glass just to display white and then you won't have all the different colors. It is useful to you to be able to see on your design screen the different types of glass represented by the color that you've chosen for that glass. All right, we still have an add button so we can add our own glass. We still have a delete button so we can delete any additional glass that we created that we don't want. We have a search button. So if I'm searching for stripper light, I can go and type in stip and there's, well, I've got four, five, and six mil stipper light glass. To go to that code, I can select it and click on the OK button, or I can just double click on that item and then it will open the stipper light glass. The image here, when I've got a pattern glass, will show me what that pattern on that glass looks like. All right, and then we have a browse and we have a print the price list. Now, one of the things to realize, and we can see it quite easily here, is when you get Starfront, all of the glass prices actually default to zero. I have just entered in a price for formal float, for 6.38 laminate, and for formal slip and light glass. So here I can see immediately which glass codes I have entered a price. 
Please remember that with speaker, nor any of the CDPs sell glass, and therefore it is your responsibility to set your own glass prices. Now you can do it in a couple of places. I can do it simply on the screen here. That's three more glass. Let's go to my four more glass. I can simply go and type in what do I pay per square meter if I'm buying sheets of that glass and what am I paying if I'm cut to size. Okay. Or alternatively, if you want to work on a, on a, on a different format, you can use the browse option here and you can manipulate the glass prices under the browse column as well. All right, so you can set your glass prices according to what you pay. Guys, please be careful. Don't be tempted to say, well, I'm paying 100 rand a square meter, so I'm going to have a bit of a safety margin. I'm going to put my price in at 120 rand a square meter. You will see once we get into the costing, it is vital for you to know the exact cost of every window that you manufacture. So don't add a bit of a buffer onto your pricing. Keep your pricing as accurate as possible. And any markups or profits you want to put on can be done in the appropriate place on the costing screen. Okay, so that is our glass file. You'll see the format of all of these files remains exactly the same. It's just the information that changes. So once you know how to edit the one file, you can edit all the files. Okay, then we have the finish file. The finish file allows you to filter only according to finished type. For example, I can filter out powder coating or I can filter out anodizing. Those are my only two options. So let's go to powder coat. I then have a code for that particular finish. I have a description. I have a finish type, which is my P or A for anodizing powder coating. I have the category of that finish, the cost per square meter, the supplier, and an alternative code. This alternative code is the code that the speaker uses in-house. Um, if you're dealing with, uh, with speaker directly, you might need to access that particular code. And then I have a color sample of that finish. Please note that this color sample is only an indication of the color. It is very difficult to represent the exact color on the screen. Different screens will show that color in different ways. So you just need to use it as a reference of more or less what that color looks like. If you want an exact color, please use the color sample supplied by the anodizing or the powder coating people. All right. Um, I have my usual navigation button, so I can go left and right, I can go to the first finish, the last finish. You do have the ability to insert your own finishes, so if you are getting powder coating done by someone other than your CDP, then you can add those finishes to the system, where speaker doesn't restrict you. You can delete finishes, you can search for a finish, so if I'm looking for a particular blue, I can type in blue and these are the different blues. So if I go to teal blue, I can go and I can see what that teal blue looks like. I have my normal browse facility as I do on, on any of the other edit screens and I can print a report that contains all my finishes. One of the nice things on the report is I can actually see a small color sample together with that item. So you can go through it and you can immediately pick up, uh, I'm looking for a tan color or an orange or a red or a yellow, whatever the case is. So it might be worthwhile to print out this report and keep it on file as a reference. If you add your own finish to the system, then you do have the ability to specify a color. So let's say I'm going to add my own powder blue. I don't know if there is one. Um, give it a code. Um, give it a, a type. So this is a powder coat. 
and my own powder blue. Okay, it is powder coating. The finish cost is let's say 120 rand a square meter, and my supplier is ABC Powder Coaters. Then to set that color, you can click there, all right? If that color doesn't really match what you're trying to do, you can click on Define Custom Colors. You can select your color. So let's take this as my reference color. I need to lighten that a bit. Okay, so let's say that's now represented of, representative of my color. Add that to your custom colors and say OK. Now that light blue will be shown. When I do my design on my design screen and I view that graphic, it will, and I've selected this finish, it will show that profile in this light blue color. Okay, if I don't want that color, I can use my delete, delete that color, yes, and I'll go back to my normal. All right, so it operates exactly the same as the other edit screens. You do have the ability to add your own finishes and remove any finishes from the system. Remember, once again, if you add your own finishes, it becomes your responsibility to manage those prices. So let's use the regular door handle. Um, let's say that the width of this is... Uh, 50 millimeters, the height of it is 25 millimeters, um, and the thickness is 10. Now, what will happen is when I utilize this hardware code in my design screen, it will draw that handle according to those dimensions. We will do this when we, in a future video, when we are looking at the actual design process. For now, just accept that this is where you can go and manipulate your handles. If, for example, it was a circular handle, then you can choose a circular handle. You can specify the width, the height, and then the thickness is basically the thickness of that line that it's going to use to represent it. All right, as I said, we will, we will cover that in a bit more detail when we go through the design process. So that's everything you need to know about the edit screen. There's nothing complicated. You have access to add or remove any items except aluminium profiles, which is understandable. The speaker sponsors this program and therefore they don't want you adding opposition dies to the system. Thank you for taking time for the, to watch this video. Stay safe, stay happy. And we'll see each other soon in a future video. Bye-bye.